This is Dr. John Bergdorf. In this video, we're going to explore the idea of multiplying integers and illustrating that multiplication using a number line. To start with, we need to think sort of about what the formal definition, if you can believe it, of what multiplication is. Multiplication can be thought of as repeated addition. The first number always tells you the number of items you're going to add, generally called the add-ins, the number of add-ins. And the second number tells you what it is you're going to add. What is, what are the add-ins? So three times two means take three twos and add them together. The sum of three twos. If I were going to illustrate that on a number line, the first, the, I, I usually represent numbers with arrows. My add-ins would be arrows. The first number would tell me how many arrows to draw. So three, to, to illustrate three times two, I would need to draw three arrows of length two. Let's do that. So we know that additions always begin on the number line at zero. Everything's positive in this example, so we'll just stick that way. Three times two would mean three arrows, draw three arrows of length two, one after the other after the other, two plus two plus two, and that's very plainly equal to six. Now that's a very simple example. You multiply two positive numbers and you get a positive answer. This same idea, though, will work with negative numbers. Let's say you're looking at 2 times negative 3. Let me change colors on that. This is going to tell you to draw 2 arrows of length negative 3. First number tells you how many to draw. The second one tells you how many to draw. So I draw my number line. And since we're moving to the left, I'm just going to draw negative numbers. Draw two arrows of length negative three. Starting at zero, go three to the left. Go another three to the left. That's two times negative three. Two positive arrows means two to the right. Two negative arrows means two to the left. Two times negative three is, oh, sorry, I messed that up a little bit. Two, two times negative three equals negative six. Multiply a positive number by a negative number and you get a negative number. Now, what gets a little bit tricky, and uh, we all struggle with this a little bit, is how to illustrate the multiplication when that first number is a negative number. That's a little bit tricky, so let's try to explore that with a couple examples. What if we have negative 2, which we want to illustrate negative 2 times 3. When the first number is positive, it tells you we're going to draw two arrows. Uh, of length 3. We have to do something sort of the opposite here. I think one way to look at that is we could erase two arrows of length 3. Positive means draw, negative means erase. Now how am I going to do that? If I draw a number line myself lots of room here. There's nothing to erase. It says I need to erase two arrows, but I don't have any arrows. Well, what I can do is create some. Now I know that everything has to start at zero. So what I'm going to do is start at zero and draw something, draw some arrows that would get me to a place where I could erase two arrows of length three. 
forgot to write that. How could I do that? I've got to start at zero. If I want arrows to erase arrows of length three, those would be arrows that would move to the right. So I would need to have to start off somewhere to the left. I think I could do it this way. I could first draw two arrows that go to the left and then draw two arrows to go to the right. I can do that because I am starting and ending at zero. Basically, this sequence of arrows get me to zero. It represents zero. These to the left, I could call them negative three, and these to the right are positive three. Starting at zero, so that I can erase two arrows of length three, the two arrows to the right. Then I get my eraser and I literally do erase those two arrows of length three and I look at what is left. What, I, what is left is two arrows that end at negative six. Negative two times three is negative six, which is the same as saying, by the way, two times negative three. Because if you look at what's left, it looks like what I've done once all that erasing is done is I've drawn two arrows of length negative three. Negative two times three is two times negative three. Now that probably looks a little bit uncomfortable and unfamiliar, so I want to do uh, a couple more to make sure we understand that. Let's work on negative four times two. So I am being asked to erase four arrows of length two. Length two would be two to the right. Number line. Put some numbers on here. Oops, not long enough. Have to start at zero. I've got to draw something so that I can erase four arrows of length two. I could do that by drawing in four arrows of length negative two. Because if I go four times two to the left and then four times two to the right, I really have gone nowhere. I'm back to having a zero. But what that allows me to do by drawing that little chain, starting at zero, going off to the left, and then back to the right, is I now have on my picture some arrows of length two, and I can erase them. In fact, I want, I want to erase four of them. So let's erase all these arrows here. And looking at my drawing, I now the arrows that remain end up at negative eight. Negative four times two should be negative eight. And looking at the picture, it's the same thing as saying four times negative two. Very, very interesting. Now, what if we have a negative number times a negative number? What if we're looking at negative three times negative two? This, the first negative tells me I'm going to erase something. I'm going to erase three arrows of length negative two. I've got to draw something in such a way that I'll have three arrows of length negative two, that's to the left, so that when I erase those, I'll still have something left. Let's see what that would look like. So I'm gonna start again at zero, because you always have to start zero. And in order to erase three arrows that go two units to the left, starting at zero, I would first have to have three arrows that go to the right. So two, two, two. Then from there, three arrows of length negative two 
would get me back to zero, and that's the important thing, that the chain has to begin and end at zero, so you're really looking at a zero. Once I've drawn that rather elaborate picture, I can then erase my three arrows of length negative two, and I can look at what is left. Negative three times negative two from this example, therefore, looks like it must be six which is the same as saying, and you can see this, three arrows of length two. Negative three times negative two is the same as three times two. So I wanna notice in some of these examples that some answers are positive and some are negative. Um, in this example, in the, in, on this page, at the top of the page, I have a negative number times a positive number, and that turns out negative. At the bottom of the page, I have a negative number times a negative number, that ends up positive. Going back a little bit, here was a negative number times a positive number. That ends up negative. A positive number times a negative number is negative. And the very first example, I had a positive number times a positive number, and that's positive. Where does that take us? Well, finally, we get to the familiar rules. What these, what these number lines illustrate are the rules that we usually use, but again, we don't want kids just to say, hey, these are rules passed by Congress or something, and I have to follow them. I don't have to understand them. The number lines are a way to illustrate why these are what they are. Multiplying integers. The product of two integers with the same sign will be positive. The product of two integers with opposite signs will be negative. So looking back at some of the examples that we have, or maybe some similar ones so we don't get bored, if I have three times negative five, I'm multiplying two numbers with opposite signs. The answer should be negative. Negative four times negative eight. I'm multiplying two numbers with opposite, with the same sign. If I multiply two numbers with the same sign, the answer should be positive. Four times eight, multiplying the absolute values of the numbers would give me 32, and the answer is positive. And let's not forget our very favorites, uh, if you multiply two positive numbers, well, guess what? That is multiplying two numbers with the same sign. The answer will be positive. So just like we all knew, five times two is 10. Sometimes um, people illustrate these rules with a little chart. And you may have seen this somewhere and I think it kind of works. These are a summary of the rules for multiplication. And it goes like this. I'm either going to, I'm going to be multiplying positive numbers by negatives or positive by ne negatives by positive or whatever. In this chart, I'm going to give you the sign of the result. In this position right here, the question is, what would happen if I multiply a positive number by a positive number? They have the same sign, so that's positive. In this position in the chart, I'm asking what happens when I multiply a positive number by a negative number? Those have opposite signs and that result would be negative. What's a negative times a positive? Opposite signs, the answer will be negative. What's a negative times a negative? Well, those are multiplying two numbers with the same sign, and the answer to those will be a positive. Oops, sorry. And so sometimes people like that little chart helps them remember. So I hope that helps uh, show one way, at least, that you can illustrate the properties of multiplication of integers uh, using some nice drawings that hopefully will give some understanding to your students.